Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. <laughs> so, um... <sighs> Can't tell that one either. As Sean Diddy Combs faces further scrutiny from federal investigators and the public, people seem to be distancing themselves from the music mogul. And that includes his longtime friend, actor Ashton Kutcher. He seems to be the latest celebrity to pull away, and how could he be drawn into a sex trafficking investigation? We're going to discuss it all with entertainment attorney and journalist Jonathan Handel. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. So in the months since bombshell lawsuits were filed against Sean Combs, the founder of Bad Boy Entertainment, and these suits like from his ex Cassandra Ventura and his former producer Rodney Jones, the rapper and entertainment mogul has been in the news, oh, I don't know, quite a lot to say the least. And there are a lot of people out there who may not want to be associated with him or get any of that negative publicity or maybe wrap themselves up in this criminal investigation. Why do I say that? Because there were these raids that happened on his properties. Agents from Homeland Security last week reportedly pursuant to an ongoing investigation into sex trafficking raided two homes, one in Miami and one in LA. Now, going back to the lawsuits, which may have prompted this investigation, the lawsuits accuse Combs of multiple horrific crimes and acts, rape, sexual assault, physical and ver verbal abuse, blowing up someone's car, involvement in shootings, weapons and narcotics possession, engaging in prostitution, even spiking the drinks of minors. But for that federal criminal investigation, there has been no word yet on what Combs' connection exactly is to that case, and Combs has not been arrested. He has not been charged. What we do know is that agents conducted these raids in almost a military-like fashion. They were armed with guns. They carried boxes full of what we believe to be a lot of electronics out of the home. And since the raids happened a little more than a week ago, Combs released a statement through his attorney denying that he's done anything to warrant this, calling it a witch hunt. But there really hasn't been anyone outside of his family that has really voiced support for him, which I thought is such a curious aspect to this. And I've asked my guests about this as well. But now... A new name has come into the mix. Ashton Kutcher. Yes, the actor who's been friends with Combs for decades. In fact, Sean Evans of the channel First We Feast interviewed Kutcher while they ate spicy wings on Hot Ones some years ago. And he asked Kutcher about how he met Sean Combs and about Combs' infamous parties. So, um... <sighs> Can't tell that one either. I mean, I'm like actually cycling through them. Our relationship was really bizarre. So we became fast friends, and we used to just hang out, watch football together. And, like, and he came over, and I was like, I'm going for a run. He's like, Oh, I'll go for a run with you. And so he comes over to go for a run. About halfway through the run, he's like, Yo, I'm running out of gas right now. But we had like paparazzi all around us at the time. He's like, You gotta slow down and but make it look like you're not slowing down. Because he had to. I look. don't want to look yeah. like I'm not gonna be able to finish this thing. And he was losing it. So we finished out the run, and then he he was so upset over the fact that he got skunked on this run that year he decided to run the New York Marathon. And so he just started immediately training for the New York Marathon. I like that, bounce the, back. Well, he just can't lose. Even when he's that close to humility, that like, it becomes a driver, and so then he went out and ran the New York Marathon. Now to be clear, Ashton Kutcher has not spoken out about Diddy since the lawsuits were filed or since the raids happened. But let's talk about this. And who better to talk about this than all of this Diddy controversy than with entertainment attorney and journalist, Jonathan Handel. Jonathan, good to have you back here on Sidebar. It's good to be back with you, Jesse. So talk to me about what your reaction is to the Ashton Kutcher component. I mean, I just played you that bit from Hot Ones where, again, he kind of is saying, oh, I can't tell you about that. I can't tell you about this party. Um, what's your reaction to it? Well, you know, this is, for, first of all, without prejudging the accusations, which are uh, horrific as you as you point out, but uh, we also have to remember we're in the court of public opinion, the court of law is what ultimately decides these sorts of things. Uh, but that said, this is a radioactive situation that no one wants to be associated with. And Ashton in particular, I think will have a muscle memory of what happened when he came out 
in support of his former castmate on the 70s show, Danny Masterson, uh, who was accused and then was actually was convicted of uh, uh, of sexual abuse and is serving up to, uh, I think, 30 years in prison now for that. And it, during the sentencing phase, Kutcher had written a letter uh, in support, apparently, of his former castmate, and that did not go down well with the public. Right. So to emphasize that, when we talk about why we haven't heard from Ashton Kutcher, or maybe we won't hear from either him or his wife, Mila Kunis, um, they were shunned for their support of Danny Masterson. Again, they start on that 70s show with him. He was convicted last year, raping two women, sentenced to 30 years in prison. And these letters of support after his conviction, you know, before he was sentenced, they said that Masterson had always, quote, treated people with decency, equality, generosity. Kutcher talked about him being a role model. Kunis talked about his excellent character. And, you know, that there was serious backlash. The couple released an apology video. And Kutcher and Kunis, they both had to resign from the anti-child sex abuse organization that Ashton Kutcher had co-founded in 2019. He wrote, I have worked with for 15 years to fight for people who are sexually exploited. Victims of sexual abuse have been historically silenced, and the character statement I submitted is yet another painful instance of questioning victims who are brave enough to share their experiences. So you believe that the backlash they received over the Masterson situation is maybe why we're not hearing anything right now about Combs. Well, I, I think it would clearly have an effect. I mean, we can't get inside their, their minds, of course, but um, the, the Daily Mail reporting that, uh, that Kunis is, uh, has told Ashton, uh, this is based on one anonymous source, apparently, that he is you know not to speak out, not to get involved. And it certainly wouldn't be any surprise if the experience they had uh, several years ago with um, with the Danny Masterson situation would have an effect on that. It'd, it'd be surprising if it didn't, frankly. Hey, I just want to say thank you so much for coming to us as we continue to break down the updates in the Diddy saga. Look, it is our privilege to be able to do this for you. And the truth is we're able to do this because we have some incredible partners who support us. And I just want to call out one right now, the sponsor of this episode, Sheath. I know you're thinking underwear, Really, Jesse, of all things. But listen, I can't emphasize this enough. This could be the most comfortable underwear on the market right now. It is, I think the best way to describe it is like a cloud. Because first of all, they aren't too loose. They aren't too tight. That's half the battle when you're dealing with underwear. They're that perfect, like, right in between fit. And it also has this stretchy fabric that's made out of a moisture wicking technology. So it's super soft, keeps everything cool comfortable you know what i mean we got summer right around the corner we got those humid months you got working out sweating sheath underwear is going to keep you feeling good they are also always improving their product because now sheath has brand new materials like bamboo and mesh that provide even more cooling comfort it's amazing so right now you can go to sheathunderwear.com slash sidebar for 20% off of your order. That is sheathunderwear.com slash sidebar for 20% off of what is a truly comfortable pair of underwear. Hope you check it out. Talk to me about what you know of the Kutcher and Combs relationship. So my understanding is I think they met originally when Ashton Kutcher was going to prank uh Diddy on the show Punk that didn't happen. Do you can you walk us through what you know of their dynamic, the relationship over the years? Well, it's you know this is really based on on reporting. I don't have uh, firsthand knowledge of it, of course, but uh, you know that it's been a a, a joking and sort of bro like uh, relationship. I think is perhaps a way to characterize it that they're that they are buddies. Uh, they've been good friends. They've uh, been back and forth with each other, and uh, you know it's sort of a Typical, uh, almost typical celebrity, young celebrity, bro uh, type relationship is is the way I'd characterize it. Um, but you know, we're seeing perhaps the the limits of that uh, in terms of not hearing anything from Kutcher, at least at this point, and you know, probably not going to uh, in terms of the situation that's evolved here. Yeah, and so they worked. They both worked on MTV together. Combs was on Making the Band. Kutcher was on Punked. Kutcher had previously supported Combs at public events like the launch of the Unforgivable Fragrance in 2007 in New York. He also attended Combs' infamous 
White Party back in 2009. He was actually posed, he posed with Combs and Demi Moore. And then in 2010, when Time Magazine named Ashton Kutcher as one of the 100 most influential people that year, Combs offered the following quote, uh, that Kutcher is a sounding board for me, like me. He's a mogul, a new media mogul, but we are uh, yin and yang. I am in your face, but he is understated, cool, suave. Do you think, thinking about this, what seems to be a close relationship that I, I will tell you right now, I didn't even remember they were friends, but now it makes sense. Uh, I'm seeing all this. Right. But but thinking about their close relationship and then hearing comments uh, like on Hot Ones where he says, you know, I can't really talk about those parties, which is something I've heard before about Diddy's parties. Do you think that's something that investigators would be looking into and what would they be looking into about it? Well, they may well, um, you know, telling telling a television interviewer that you can't talk about something is a little different than telling a, a federal investigator the, uh, the same thing. And, um, you know, I think that in the context of the accusations that, you know, that have been made publicly, that HSI, Homeland Security Investigations, and other federal investigators perhaps would be, you know, very interested to know what exactly it is about those parties that Kutcher felt he couldn't, uh, couldn't talk about. So, you know, that, that, that certainly in the context of the broad scope of these accusations, that it's not, you know, simply, uh, you know, one encounter or one, you know, sort of one-off kind of thing, but the accusations that seem broader than that, you know, potentially, potentially uh, would garner interest from investigators. You know, it's, it's, there is this dynamic and and you alluded to it in terms of asking about the the allegations and the civil suits. There is this dynamic where, you know, investigators, federal investigators, state investigators, in other cases, do, uh, you know, they read the newspapers, quote unquote. They do watch the media, and uh, they can't be, you know, when there when there's a level that's reached, um, you know, it can trigger an investigation. Yeah, and, and to be clear. He could be referring to something about the parties that's not necessarily illegal, maybe something embarrassing, maybe something he didn't want to get out there. Doesn't mean he knows about a crime. But having said that, the government, they could subpoena Ashton Kutcher to, to provide information, right? And, and that's something we have been we have been wondering, you know, a big talking point is, well, why didn't, you know, that you have these federal agents that swarm these properties? Sometimes a raid like that is in conjunction with an indictment and arrest. Here's it's not the case. I'm of the opinion they're still in the evidence gathering phase. We don't they have to process everything that was recovered from the homes. But I also was suspecting that they're issuing subpoenas to a lot of people right now to get a better understanding of what that looks like. And if that's the case and Ashton Kutcher was issued a subpoena, then no wonder he wouldn't be saying anything about Diddy right now either. Right. Well, that's right. And, you know, let, let's let's underline the significance of those raids. OK, we have the Fourth Amendment that says that unreasonable searches and seizures are prohibited in this country. You, you federal agents can't simply legally barge into someone's home without having persuaded a judge to issue a warrant to sign off on a warrant application. So, you know, that's and, and it's not something that you that you do early on in an investigation, if you don't have enough support to, uh, you know, to justify a warrant. Uh, no, probable that's cause. Come in probable form. cause, yeah. Probable cause. That's exactly right. <clears throat> you need probable cause. And you need, you know, con in conjunction with that, it may be that you're afraid that evidence will be destroyed. But it, nonetheless, you can't simply say, well, I'm afraid evidence will be destroyed. Let me, you know, sign off on this and I'll, I'd like to barge into a couple of mansions on on either coast of the country. So, you know, it, it seems highly probable that there is a very deep and serious investigation going on here. And that would involve approaching sort of circle by circle, getting closer and closer to the subject or target of your investigation. And, and again, to be clear, that he has not been named as a subject or a target, but, uh, you know, um, his homes were raided and uh, subpoenas for people around him and who may have partied with him would not, you know, be at all a surprise. And that's the question I want to ask you right now. If we talk, and, and what I'm about to say, let me be very clear, is entirely speculative, okay? I'm reading the tea leaves. I'm speculative. I'm, I'm making that clear. If Ashton Kutcher, should he be concerned about being criminally charged? And why do I say that? 
But I say that because a big question has been, well, if all of these parties have been going on and this illegal conduct has been going on and you have celebrities who have been there and knew about it and never said anything, do they face liability? Um, is it just the knowledge of it and not doing something? Is it the participating in it? Again, speculating. We don't know. I'm reading the allegations in these lawsuits. There hasn't even been a criminal complaint. Um, but I'm just asking you, do you think that this is a, a fair conversation to have that high-profile celebrities who were with Diddy, partied with Diddy, are concerned right now that they, too, could go within the orbit of federal investigators? Well, that's a very fact-specific question. We don't know the facts. You know, did somebody see something and not say something versus did somebody encourage something to happen versus did something go on that someone participated in? All of those details make a difference. What I what I can say, and I don't, I don't want to speculate in the least, honestly, about, you know, does a particular celebrity, whether it's Ashton or somebody else, face, you know, collateral liability. But what I can say is that in a situation like this, uh, any smart celebrity, any smart celebrities, you know, entertainment lawyer is going to be consulting with criminal defense counsel as well. Uh, so that if a subpoena does come down or, you know, or if there is, if there someone was at a party where potentially something illegal, you know, happened, you want to be ready and understand what the li potential liability is. You want to be able to counsel your client. Are you going to answer questions from, you know, federal investigators or are you going to take the fifth amendment? Uh, you know, what, how exactly do you handle this? You don't wait until the day you get a, you know, your client gets a subpoena to then start thinking about, right. well, gee, what's our position here? So again, that's without any speculation as to whether there's any liability whatsoever on the part of Ashton Kutcher or anyone else. Yep. Yep. And look, we're again, just speculating, but it is interesting. His name's coming in the news. I think a lot of old relationships, a lot of old videos are surfacing again, because in light of this, we will obviously have a better, understa better understanding of everything as this case progresses. And to be clear, this could lead nowhere. Diddy could not. There's a possibility he will not be charged, that this investigation will stop. Just because you have probable cause to initiate a raid doesn't mean that you have sufficient evidence to get back a grand jury indictment, um, and and we, or even that if they want to submit it to a grand jury, or even they want to go forward with charges. But we're reading into it. Jonathan Handel, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. I know it was early today. You're on the West Coast, so always appreciate you being so generous with your time, sir. It's a pleasure, Jesse. Thank you very much. All right, everybody, that is all we have for you right now here on this episode of Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.